friends. I am excited to share a couple of my testimonies from the weekend I just had at Ashes to Beauty. Um, if you're not familiar with what that is, it is a women's conference in Missouri. They have them four times a year. They also, also have a men's conference called Men's Encounter five times a year. Um, but it's just a weekend of coming together with other Christians um, and just getting your Jesus cup filled, basically. Like it's, I will never be somebody who says you have to, um, like you have to go to a certain place to encounter God. Like you can encounter God anywhere, anytime. You can, he can set you free from your past or things you're struggling with anytime, anywhere. But there's just something about coming together with a thousand plus other women um, or men, if you go to Men's Encounter, of just, and having like focus, the only focus, like you're disconnecting from the, from your life, from the world, and your focus is God. Like the, the teachings, the worship is about God, the teachings are based around um, God and the relationships in our life, and it's so, everything is so biblical, and it's just, it's amazing what 48 hours of fully focusing on God and growing closer to Him can do. It is so powerful, so freeing, um, just things that you might have struggled with for years, just broken off, and yeah. It's, it's hard to explain. I, I always say you have to go experience it for yourself to truly understand how powerful it can be. Um, but so this was my third time going. Um, I got to spend the weekend with my mom and sisters. It was their first time. So it was just that in itself, like just getting to like experience it together just drew us so much closer together we were able to talk through some things that we had you know never shared with each other um and just grow closer together like I feel like we're just closer than we've ever been before and and then um I guess going into kind of my own testimonies of how, how God worked through the weekend in my own life. Um, Saturday morning, they had a session on free from the past and forgiveness. Um, and if you watch my testimony video, you I already shared with how I had gone to Ashes to Beauty for the first time back in February of 2024 and how much freedom I found from my past and just how, how much forgiveness I found for all of that. And, um, yeah, you can go back, watch my testimony video. If you didn't, it'll make all make more sense if you watch that, but it just like, anyway, Saturday morning, um, they, during those sessions, the ladies, some of the ladies who you were sharing their testimonies, they usually have somebody share, a life testimony um, kind of to go with each topic that they have and then they have somebody teaching on that topic too but um, it just like some of their testimonies I just related to so much and I found myself like I found these feelings of anger and bitterness rising up and I couldn't understand why I was feeling them because I had thought I had completely forgiven and found freedom from all of that. Um, and I do think, you know, I had come a long ways and I, but there was just like, there was more layers on the onion to peel back, so to speak, and just going deeper. Um, I tried to push those feelings down and was like, no, I have forgiven. Um, but the more I tried to, like my heart just started racing and I just felt so like, I don't know, overwhelmed or just very yeah like it just consumed me and so um I wrote it down and I took it up to the cross to leave it at the cross 
Um, and before I could make it back to my seat, I felt, I just found myself before I knew what happened. I was in front of one of the ladies who had shared her testimonies and I just told her how I was feeling. Um, and I shared just a little bit her with her, um, of my story. And she, she said, it's not like, the fact that I am having those feelings is not that I have not forgiven, um, but it's like just making a choice to forgive again. Um, and also like not, not thinking ha that having those feelings is wrong, but it's what I choose to do with those feelings. Am I going to let Satan continue to f like feed me? those feelings and continue to dwell on them and like let him make me believe like I haven't forgiven or whatever it might be or I can take those feelings I can take them before God I can tell him exactly how I'm feeling and then I can surrender those feelings to him and I can give them to him and just tell them that I want to I just want him to have them basically and then choose to forgive again and I then she prayed over me and I went back to my seat feeling so light so free like it's hard to explain like there's so much joy and freedom um and I had so yeah for those of you have who have been there this will make more sense but the first two times that I went I did not go up um and ask for prayer. I thought I, you know, I'm good. I can just talk to God in my seat. I can just write my things on my paper, take it up to the cross, leave it at the cross. It can just stay between me and God. Um, and I do think, you know, we can find freedom in that way, but there's just something so powerful about letting somebody speak life over you, letting somebody pray over you, Especially when it's somebody who has gone through similar things and they can, you know, they've overcome that and they can share with you how they overcame that and just speak life into you. And so, yeah, if you do go, um, whether you've been there and just haven't stood up and went up for prayer or you go for the first time, I just highly encourage you to be open to, if if you feel like you need to go up for prayer, just be open to do that um, because it can just be so life-changing. Like I truly, I felt like this third time there was just, like it was the most life-changing one of them all so far and I think I truly believe it had a lot to do with me being willing to just open up and ask for prayer. Let somebody pray over me. Um, the Bible talks about laying hands on people and praying for them. It can just be very powerful. Um, so yeah, that was just amazing to just have that even deeper freedom um, and forgiveness for things in the past. And... Then Saturday night, um, they had asked people, um, they had given, given different options for people if they struggle with this certain thing, they can come up for prayer. And then they told us, the rest of us who didn't come up for prayer, we could pray for each other. Um, so I went over to one of the ladies who was beside me and I just asked her what I could pray for her. Or how I could pray for her and I just prayed over her and as I was praying for her I was like God just I knew like God was asking me to the next time that I go back I need to go back as a server um, and if you've not been there before a server is just somebody who um, is available like they help help with things throughout the weekend with like serving food and all those things but then they're also available to pray with you if you need prayer, if you want somebody to talk to. Um, so I guess the next time I go, I'll be going as a server. I know it will be stepping out of my comfort zone, but I know it will also be very good for me. And I'm sure there will be a lot of, 
a lot of ways that I can and will grow um, in doing that. So I'm excited, but also a little bit nervous. There's just so many notes that I took, like they have 13 different topics and I have pages of notes um, that I could share, but I also don't want to like give it all away, like the topics and stuff, so that if you do go, it's a little bit of, you know, anticipation of what, what it's the whole weekend is going to be about. Um, they give us these booklets with all the topics and places for notes and stuff. Um, another thing on Sunday, they had a session about mothers. Um, and I, one of the ladies was sharing how, um, she had been in a season where she had three little children and she just felt like she was just surviving in motherhood and how she struggled with, um, you know, raising her voice with her children like when speaking to her children or like snapping at them, getting angry with them. And I just, I related to that so much. And this is really hard for me to admit to um, because it is something that I have struggled with is not responding to my children in the way that I should always. Um, and like I wanted to, I wanted to respond the right way so bad. But before I knew it, I would just lose it again. And yeah, I went up for prayer after the session and I just walked up to a random lady and it was like so assigned by God because like she, I had no idea, but she struggled with the same thing and she just had so much wisdom to speak into that and it was just, yeah, knowing that somebody else had struggled with that and overcame that just gave me so much hope in knowing that I can overcome it too. You know, I I truly believe like God can completely set us free from things we struggle with, whether that is anger, um, you know, lust, um, whatever it might be, even just, you know, addiction to watching movies or addiction to your phone like whatever it can be I feel like he can completely set us free completely take those desires away from us but I also believe sometimes he he chooses not to completely take those things away to give us opportunities to grow um in those areas and to um yeah, just be humble and accept his grace. Um, but a couple things that she shared with me is like when she she's just feeling overwhelmed or maybe, you know, the children aren't playing nicely or whatever. Like if she just doesn't know what to do next, she just sits down and reads the Bible with them. And I thought that was just so, so simple, but so like, I feel like it could just change the whole situation. Um, also, including them in things. I find, for me, myself, like, I was sharing with her how I know when I'm most likely to not respond in the way that I should to them is when I am in the middle of doing something and they might, you know, get into an argument or whatever it might be. I can find myself just losing it and trick quick wanting to quickly resolve it so that I can get back to what I was doing. And so that's she was just like include them in what you're doing um and just tell them, you know, um whatever it might be, maybe it's something that I have to get done right then I can tell them, you know, mom needs to get that this done right now. So if you help me then after we're done, I can go play with you or whatever it might be. And that was just yeah. Because it's easy for me to just want to do things on my own. Um, because, yeah, a lot of times it will take a little bit longer if we include them. Um, but also apologizing. When we do fail, apologize. And be an example in that way. And let them know, like, they can, they can tell me how that made them feel. Um, my children are still almost too young for that to, like, explain like tell me what they're feeling 
but I want them to feel safe to tell me how they're feeling so that as they get older, like they can also feel safe to come to me when they have those feelings or they might have done something wrong. Like I want to be that safe place for them. Um, also like looking up scriptures that talks about anger and, you know, taking our thoughts captive, captive and all of that. Um, and writing those down and reading those, rereading those, um, having them laying somewhere where you see them throughout the day. Um, because that's something like, even sometimes when, if I don't respond in anger, like I might respond calmly, but in my mind, I'm feeling anger. That's still not right. Like that is still not, still not the right way to think. Um, so yeah, that was just, and also realizing like, I know the right way to respond. So I also have a certain sense of responsibility to use self-discipline and respond in the right way and not just, um, how would you say it? Not just always blame it on, you know, well, I did it because of this or this or this, um, but taking responsibility for it and just being aware of the things that does trigger that and then trying to avoid those or um yeah just being aware of how I'm feeling and taking responsibility for that and replacing it with truth from the bible or whatever it might be um so yeah that was a couple of um my testimonies their session on marriage was absolutely amazing too um and i just yeah i might read a couple of my my notes here we can build our spouse up or tear them down we should encourage our husband in his leadership role speak life over our husbands knowing his love language um and she had said that she did an interview of, I think she said 30 men or whatever, asking them like, what is, what are the five most important things to them in their marriage? And this was the result of that interview. Um, number one was respect, supporting his decision, decisions and giving him affirmations. Number two was emotional and spiritual connection. Number three was sexual intimacy and to initiate it. Number four was non-sexual intimacy. So like just spending time together um, or like touching in non-sexual ways. Number five was uninterrupted time together. Um, whether that's just, you know, going out and doing things together. Um, Pray over your marriage bed. And then um, good communication will strengthen your marriage. In the absence of knowledge, people will draw their own conclusion of what and why things happen. So like not jumping to conclusions of, you know, maybe thinking my spouse is feeling a certain way or because of how they're reacting or whatever. But instead, like, instead of assuming how they're feeling or what's going on, like, asking them. Because if we don't, if the knowledge is absent, we will draw our own conclusion of what and why things happen. So, yeah, that was just a couple things that really, yeah, I just came home feeling so free and just like hopeful that I can overcome things in my life and just have complete freedom. Um, so yeah, I am going to share some, a couple of videos and pictures of our weekend, but I also wanted to, um, do a giveaway. Um, so if you are someone who might be interested in going, um, to Ashes to Beauty, the next one is in September. Um, not exactly on, sure on the dates right now, but 
I'm going to be giving away two tickets um, to Ashes to Beauty. This is just something that I'm doing personally because after having gone three times now, like I, my heart's desire is for every woman to get to experience it. Just for the fact of it can be so life-changing, not because I think you need it, but it can just, yeah, even if we think we don't need it, like, it can truly be just so encouraging to just have 48 hours focused on God and just growing deeper with Him. Um, so, I'm going to be giving away two tickets. So, the way that you can enter to win one of these tickets is just comment something that you took away from what I just shared, whether it was something that stood out to you, maybe something that um, you have learned yourself, or maybe something that you want to apply to in your own life. Um, yeah, leave it here in the comments of the YouTube video, not on the Facebook or Instagram post where I shared it, if you found it there, but like in the actual comments of the YouTube video. Um, and then, yeah, I will be drawing a winner. Um, you can decide when, like the winners can decide when they want to, to use the ticket, whether that's in September when the next Ashes to Beauty is, or whether that is next year sometime, um, whenever it works for you, you will, yeah, I will pay for your ticket just to give you an opportunity to go, um, if maybe money is tight or whatever. Or if that might be something that is holding you back from going. Um, but also, I wanted to say, if you have any questions about the weekend, like any questions about the event, um, anything like that, feel free to reach out to me. I just, yeah, like I said, it is on my heart that other women could be able to experience it as well. So, yeah, thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.